It's a matter of having someone who's totally unfit to have power be given more power than any person in a generation. And, and he's unfit for in every possible way. It's like, it's not, it's not that he's just got a, a few screws loose, like every screw is loose. Every screw that you would want totally cranked down is loose or non-existent in him. You know, anyone who thinks I have Trump derangement syndrome. Around 2015, 2016, that's a very small tribe of very smart people, mm. uh, which was referred to as the intellectual dark web which I remember at that time, we weren't doing this, we we're just two comedians. I remember watching you guys have those conversations and right. being inspired by people. I don't think you guys had the answers, but you had the right questions. You mm. did have the right questions. And then over time, we watched that loose tribe of very bright people, as loose tribes of very bright people always do, crumble, disintegrate, right. fall out. Yeah. What happened? Well, but the first thing that happened is that it was actually, for some of us more than others, a tongue-in-cheek label for a... And then very quickly, there were people who sort of joined this, this collection uh, or who were said to be in it, who, some of whom I had never heard of at that point, who, you know, upon just a little bit of analysis, revealed themselves to be people who I, you know, I really don't agree with. People who, like, it just, it's just wrong to think you know, they were ever moving in the same lane I was in at that point when we were all called IDW people, right? Um, but I think the biggest force of fragmentation was Trump and what certain people did or didn't do with that phenomenon, you know? And, and this is and what that, I was going to ask you. I'd say there were two things that fractured yeah. from that looking... I mean, can, from can COVID answer. later, but, right. but yeah. Trump, Trump was the So the let's big start one. Yeah. with Trump, because yeah. I want to talk about COVID as well. But if we yeah. start with Trump, you took a, a different view to almost everybody, I would say, in what was described as the IDW, in, right. in the sense that you were, uh, I think you were calling for Twitter to shut down Trump's account and yeah. were happy that it happened. Yeah. That's a very different position to pretty much everybody else. Why did you take that position? Well, for two reasons. One, I mean, so the the non, uh, the generic reason is, and this is something I've never gotten a clear answer on from any of the people who t took the different side of this. Um, and many, so many of these people are ostensibly libertarians or at least, you know, quasi libertarians. And they, they want a, a, something like a minimum of state coercion and, and control. They don't want just a, a proliferation of laws to, you know, just to, to make our lives more difficult. Um, and that's, a, that's an orientation, you know, though I'm, I consider myself liberal and have always voted as a Democrat, I mean, until, until we dealt with this woke apocalypse, you know, I, I would have certainly called myself a Democrat without much self-consciousness. I mean, I, so I, this, is, this, is some, this is a way in which I'm, I'm more extreme than, than most people on the left. Like, I, I do think at this point in history, you should be able to have a social media platform and exclude any specific group you want and just say, that's the way we do it, right? And if you don't like it, boycott us, right? So like, I, I wouldn't have said this in 1964 when, we're, when we have to pass a Civil Rights Act. But at this point, I think you should have the right to be an asshole who destroys your reputation and, and suffers the, the, the penalties in, you know, in the marketplace of ideas, right? So I think if, if you want to just have a social media network for beautiful people, right, or people who are, you know, guys who are over six feet two and blonde hair and blue eyes, right, you know, I can't get on, you should feel free to, you know, raise money for that enterprise, launch it, and I'll be, you know, I'll laugh when it fails, right? So like that's, now, under some construal, that kind of thing, you know, is or should be illegal, you know, if you're, if you're just a, a normal person uh, on the left, but... Uh, I don't think, I think at this moment in history, it shouldn't be. But in any case, I just, when I look at Twitter, I see a company that has a term, has terms of service, which people like Alex Jones and Trump clearly violated. I mean, whether they in fact violated this terms of service as written, I think they violated any uh, coherent terms of service that, that Twitter should have had, right? Like you, you shouldn't knowingly be able to turn your mob on a private citizen and ruin their life, lives through doxing, right? Which is what Jones and Trump were doing. It just 
again and again and again to people. Every time, I mean, Jones was doing it with the Sandy Hook parents, right? You literally have... But Sam, you're conflating two very different people. I mean, Alex Jones does not belong in this conversation. Yeah. I'm not interested in Alex no, Jones No, right well, that, but that, I would dispute that. I think Trump is essentially, we got Alex Jones as president of the United States. I don't think they're very different people. I think that it's the same phenomenon How in, so? my, in my world. Because just the, the level of, of misinformation, disinformation, lying, the charlatanism, the, 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 the conscious fraudulence of everything at scale, and the targeting of individuals with, with, with known consequences, right? Like, like Trump, every time Trump singles out a specific citizen and says, look at this jackass who's you know, trying to, you know, whatever, whatever the, the claim would be, that is a human sacrifice. We know that person's life is just never the same again because he's turned tens of millions of morons on that person and you know vicious morons on that i mean like i mean that's the, the the core of the trump phenomenon is now and has been for many years i mean really since the beginning I mean, since he you know certainly since he became the front runner and and certainly since he became elected in 2016 it's a personality cult i mean it has all the dynamics of a personality cult these are not reasoning yes there are some there are a few calculated people like peter Thiel on the margins who have some story as to why they would back him, right? But the core of the cult, you know, which is all you know, nested with QAnon and 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 uh, conspiracy thinking and the big lie, and you know, it's it, like Trump can do no wrong, right? He's um, that is so. It's I mean, as a Venn diagram, it's just it overlaps eighty percent with Alec, the Alex Jones phenomenon. So I just I see them as the same problem. I see these these are. These are, you know, if they're not actually clinical, clinically, you know, diagnosable as psychopaths, they're the next best thing. These are people who are so malignantly selfish and so careless with respect to the consequences of their actions in the lives of others that if you, if you, are, if you own a platform or you're, you know, if you're overseeing a public, a, pub, a public company that owns a platform, why should the government force you to keep these people on, right? Like, what, like you should be free to say, sorry, you're not, not on my watch. Are you going to be having these consequences? But we, we had a, at that point, we had a sitting president who for months and months and months, I mean, you know, at least six or eight months, you know, certainly months prior to the November election, would not commit to a peaceful transfer of power. And then he did you know, certainly something, whether it was everything in his power or just a lot, he managed to see that we did not have a peaceful transfer of power, right? And then, you know, so the, who, what's, gonna, what's the mob going to do on January 7th and 8th and 9th, you know, if you just leave Trump on the platform? I, th I mean, I just thought it was a, a very simple decision to kick him off and, and it, 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 totally analogous to the Alex Jones decision. Yeah, uh, Alex yeah. Jones is a, for me yeah. a different case, but, yeah, but I hear I, what you're I saying. But I think Trump. I mean, Trump is just. I hear what you say. He got, in he your got, mind, they're, they're similar. He I got the you. reputation washing of having successfully become president. You know, he's Alex Jones. Okay, yeah. uh, Francis. Before you, you move us into COVID, uh, let me try from a different angle, Sam, sure. because I want to explore this intellectual point. Yeah. Right? Do you really want to live in a country where? you have a digital public square, which in my opinion, Twitter is. We can disagree about that if you want, but that's my opinion. It's a digital public square, and you have a company that has clearly one-sided enforcement. I, I hear what you're saying about delegitimizing de the electoral process that Trump did, right. and I was concerned about that. I think you can't question the system in that way. But when you see that he gets banned, and then a story about Hunter Biden gets banned, mm. that under the guise of it being Russian disinformation, we later learn it wasn't Russian disinformation. Right. That to a lot of people seems like, you know, I said it when we were talking to Joe Rogan, it's putting your hand on the scales yeah. in favor oh, yeah. of one side. In the digital public square, you add that to the banning of Trump and lots of other people being banned from one side predominantly. Right. Is that 
Is that the world you want to live in, where one team gets to just ban people it disagrees with off the platform, it gets to pretend that things that are true are not true, it gets to shut down the sharing of information with people who want to make their own democratic choice? Well, it's a, it's a hard question, and there are pieces of the question that are individually hard. It's like the Hunter Biden laptop story is something that I still don't have a, a full opinion about. I actually don't know what we should have done about that. I mean, so I, so I see the reason, I see both sides of, of it. I, I can argue either side of it. The first thing to admit is it may be impossible to do this impeccably, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like the, until we have, you know, perfect artificial intelligence, it's just going to be impossible to be truly consistent with your terms of service because you're always going to be able to find the example of the thing that was not appropriately moderated. Yes, uh, but if we all know that if that laptop was Donald Trump's junior, oh yeah, this would be 100%. treated. That's oh, yeah. that's all I'm asking. Oh about, yeah. Well, right? so, so but that's a, so. Let's take that piece. Um, I think it was totally appropriate to view Trump in a, to be existing in a, in a domain that was orthogonal to partisan politics. I, my criticism of Trump is totally nonpartisan. It's, it's a, it's a, it's not a matter of his, like, I probably agree with half of his policies or more than half of his policies. It's not a matter of policy. It's a matter of having someone who's totally unfit to have power be given more power than any person in a generation. And, and he's unfit for in every possible way. It's like, it's not, it's not that he's just got a, a few screws loose, like every screw is loose. Every screw that you would want totally cranked down is loose or non-existent in him. Um, and so, yeah, so it's, I mean, that, that's my argument. So, like, so, so my argument is that it was appropriate for Twitter and the heads of big tech and, journal, and the heads of journalistic organizations to feel that they were in the presence of something like a, a once in a lifetime moral emergency, right? Whereas this is not the same thing as not liking George Bush, you know, or not liking John McCain or not liking Mitt Romney for their politics. This was, here's a guy who is capable of anything, right? He's not, he's not ideological. But he's, again, he's, he's a black hole of selfishness, right? He's, he's, he's just, and so there's no telling what he's going to do. Um, and we cannot afford to have four more years with this guy, right? And, and, and so, um, so what, what should well-intentioned people do who have a lot of power in these various ways? You know, you're running the New York Times, you're running CNN, you're running Twitter. What should they conspire to do? But it, it, at the eleventh hour, when it's when, who knows how this election is going to go? Who know who knows what the capacity for, you know, disinformation at the last minute to to tip the balance is? Then what do you do with the Hunter Biden laptop story? When we already know we we know how this played out in twenty sixteen with the Hillary Clinton email you know, press conference where, where Comey in, 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 a, in an abundance of scrupulosity felt like he had to come before the cameras, I think 10 days out from the election and say, you know, we've, we're going to open up this, this investigation again because we've got Anthony Weiner's laptop. Uh, we could see, I mean, again, her failure to become president was overdetermined. She was a, an appallingly bad candidate. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of just tracking the poll numbers, you could like that was that was the killing blow to her candidacy, right? That that final moment, and this was a this was a highly analogous situation. This was we're going to open up this laptop from hell, and the n news cycle for who knows how long is going to be just a, just the, the, conceivably just a nuclear bomb of a, an October October surprise, and. We're going to get four more years of Trump if we actually give this a fair hearing. But Sam, but you can't do that, Sam. Surely you've got to realize that you've got to be <laughs> fair. And number the thing that I want to we're talk, all equal before the law. Yeah, and aren't then, we? And the other this thing, isn't the law. But again, I know this it's isn't not the law. law. But yeah. if this is if you accept my my supposition that this is the public square, then it is the law. 
it is, if it is the public square, then it is law. Now, you're arguing it's not the public square, which is fair enough. Yeah. Right, that's right. fine. Yeah, but no. why don't we move on? Because I think we, we've done enough. Yeah, sure. Yeah. He's of sucked course. up a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, he got, always, a, he's got he a habit of doing yeah. that. Yeah. 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 No, but I'll just say, just finally, I, I do, th I, again, it's like a coin toss for me, the Hunter mm -hmm. Biden laptop thing. Because I, I do understand how corrosive it is for an institution like the, the New York Times to show obvious bias and inconsistency and dishonesty in how they, it's like they couldn't even frame it honestly. It's not like, <laughs> it, it's not like, it's like the way I would frame it is, uh, listen, I don't care what's in Hunter Biden's, I mean, Hunter Biden, at that point, Hunter Biden literally could have had, had the corpses of children in his basement. I would not have cared, right? It's like, it's, there's nothing. First of all, it's Hunter Biden, right? It's not, it's like, it's not Joe Biden, but even if Joe, like even the, whatever scope of Joe Biden's corruption is, like if, you, if we could just go down that rabbit hole endlessly and, and understand that he's getting kickbacks from Hunter Biden's deals in Ukraine or wherever else, right? Or China, it is infinitesimal compared to the corruption we know Trump is involved in. It's like, it's like, it's like a firefly to the sun, right? I mean, like there, there's just, it doesn't even it doesn't even stack up against Trump University, right? Trump University as a story is worse than anything that could be in in Hunter Biden's laptop, in my view, right? Now that's not that doesn't answer the people who say it's still completely unfair to not have looked at the laptop in a timely way and to have shut down the you know the New York Post's Twitter account like that. That's a, just a conspiracy. That's a left wing conspiracy to deny the presidency to Donald Trump. Absolutely it was, absolutely, right? But I think it was warranted. You're saying you are content with a left-wing conspiracy to prevent somebody being democratically re-elected as president? Well, no, I'm, I'm content, well, so it's, but the thing is, it's just not left-wing, right? So Liz Cheney is not left-wing, right? Liz Cheney You're is doing everything in her power. You're content with a conspiracy to prevent somebody no, being but democratically it's not elected? A, no, but there's nothing, conspiracy, it's not, it, it was a conspiracy out in the open, it does, but it doesn't matter if it was, a, it doesn't matter what part's conspiracy, what part's out in the open? I mean, I think it's like, if people get together and talk, and talk about what should we do with, about this phenomenon, you know, if, if it's like, if there, if there was an asteroid hurtling toward Earth and, and we got in a room together with all of our friends and had a conversation about what we could do to deflect its course, right? Is that a conspiracy? You know, like some of that conversation would be in public, some of it would be in private. We have a massive problem. We have an existential threat, right? Politically speaking, I consider Trump an existential threat to our democracy. Right now, it's not, he's not going to destroy the world, very well, likely. If he destroyed but, democracy in the process of protecting democracy. No, that, but that doesn't destroy. No, our our. I'm not. What I'm not suggesting. At no point was I suggesting we should stuff ballots no, or or, no. or actually break the machinery of democracy. But the all pol political opinion is already being just, just completely inundated with misinformation, biased takes, half-truths, mm -hmm. and outright lies, right? Like, and, and, yeah. Or just the amplification of, of bad or misleading information based on you know, the algorithm, right? Um, so that's, it's, like it's, it's already just an abattoir of opinion, right? And now the question is, you know what can you do with your own biases and your own the, 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 uh, to, to 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 get the outcome you think is actually better, not just for yourself personally, but for the world, right? So like I have like it is I'm completely unconflicted in in the claim that a tr that a a first Trump term was bad and a second Trump term would be bad, and it literally doesn't matter what was. Uh, what what else was on the the menu? Like literally, uh, pick a pick a, a random American better than Trump in the in the Oval Office. Like the the, the likelihood that you're going to get someone who's worse than Trump, give, given what I consider that the, is bad about Trump, is I mean it's it's on the order of one in a million, right? Like you're just not you're not going to get you're not going to get worse than Trump if you pick at random, and you know Hillary Clinton for all of her flaws was not worse than Trump. Joe Biden, for, Joe Biden, we could have known Joe Biden was gonna just be comatose in office, not worse than Trump, right? 
Um, Kamala Harris not worth like like it's all and 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 again it's not just a, a marginal call. It's just these are people who are normal politicians who are so much more constrained by predictable machinery, right? There's there's like there's there's such less of an opportunity there to destroy institutions that we have to rely on, right? If, with, with any of those people in charge, including a random person in charge, a random person who's gonna be terrified at the responsibility of the office and default to expert opinion, you know, uh, across the board. Um, no, Trump is, again, Trump is an Alex Jones level figure for me. And, okay. and okay. so, you know, it's, it's analogous, like a smaller problem is to just for some billionaire to buy the New York Times and give it to Alex Jones to run, right? That would be an enormous, that would be a catastrophic loss and mistake, but that's a smaller problem than getting Trump reelected. The last question I'm going to ask, which actually isn't yeah. really about Trump, is I think, could you agree that with Trump, the reason he is created is because he is a symptom of the system, whereby people, ordinary people, feel that their voices aren't being heard. Yeah. They realize that, you know, Washington is a machine that doesn't particularly care about, about them. They were betrayed time after time, many times by the Democrats, many times by the Democrats who said that they were representing ordinary working people, like oh, yeah. the Labour Party were in my country. And they felt that these politicians didn't care. So why not vote for Trump? What else have you got to lose? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I think that explains most of the, his support and certainly his success. Yeah. But but I think I think we should be honest about how um, well both uninformed and nihilistic by turns that attitude is right. It's just like it, it's not. I mean that that is like the the clearest eruption of Thanatos you know in our lifetime, right? It's just like let's I'm just, let's just burn it all down on some level. Like he, this guy's our wrecking ball, everything you care about. And, and uh, uh, you know, just uh, the sounds of explosions are gonna just give us pleasure, right? Like, that, like that's where we are with tens of millions of people in this country. That's a, you know, that is a, uh, a very scary basis from which to try to, uh, you know, cooperate at scale and and um, produce political outcomes that are actually going to be good. Well, smart, ethical people find what's happening on the left much more confusing than what's happening on the right. So it's like, so people ask me like, and, and so, and I spend much more time focused on the left than I than I do on Trump or on the right because. Not in this interview, Sam. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, yeah, you, 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 That's you, you go to me. But look, you, revulsion, you got the full dose of my Trump. Revulsion yeah. is a strong word. Why yeah. do you, and I feel exactly the same thing, and you yeah. know why. We talked about my book before. I come from a society that's seen some of these ideas yeah, yeah. being implemented. Yeah. Why do you feel revulsion, a very, very strong emotion about this ideology? Well, because it's... Um, I mean, one, it is destroying institutions that I actually care about. Right, so like you know, white supremacy and far right lunacy is not affecting institutions that matter. You know, by my lights, right? You know, you could argue it, it affected the you know the White House and and the U.S. government to some degree at the margins. I mean, I, I think I think um, allegations of Trump's racism or his alignment with the far right, far right and white supremacy, I think that's been massively exaggerated by the left. And, you know, most of, most of the claims to his, I have, I actually have no doubt that he's actually racist, but most of the public claims to his racism, I think are obviously false and, and, you know, inconsistent. And um, so it's, uh, I mean, I think you have to be intellectually honest, even as you deride mm -hmm, these mm -hmm. dangerous uh, people and extremes. Um, so, uh, The le so the, the left has, you know, as I'm sure you've pointed out many times on, on your show, I mean, it has, it has captured institutions. It has captured yeah. academia. It's captured journalism. It's captured science to an amazing degree. It's captured Hollywood. It's, um, and 
for reasons that are understandable because, you know, it is hard to figure out what's wrong with Black Lives Matter as, as a movement. As a, it's like it's, you, you look at it, you know, for, it, it's, it's almost perfectly engineered to just, you know, get past the, 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 the blood-brain barrier and just attach to all the right ethical receptor sites, right? It's like, it's just, this is, this is uh, of course, I care about, uh, you know, uh, of course, racism is, is, is disgusting. I would, the last thing I would want to be is a racist. Of course, I acknowledge the, 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 the legacy of slavery and, and just how hard fought all of our civil rights gains have been in the United States. Of course, I don't want, you know, members of minority groups feeling victimized, you know, much less being victimized. Uh, you know, I want fair hiring practices. I would, you know, just, just check all the boxes on, on you know, uh, if, to have a good liberal conscience, right? If you're that sort of person and you, you're confronted by the Black Lives Matter as a social phenomenon and the protests over George Floyd and all of that, it is very hard to see that you're in the presence of a completely dishonest moral panic. You know, you only need something like five or eight percent of you know really energized you know, activist minority to completely co-opt a conversation, and that's what has been accomplished. And but it's not just they're, they're a minority; they're an exceptionally powerful minority. Yeah. Sam. Oh yeah. You know, they're the ones who dictate culture. They're the ones who set the tone. They're the ones who you know who edit and create newspapers. Hundred percent. So that's the real problem, isn't it? But the question that I want to ask you is. Where do you think this is going to go? Where do you think this is going to end up? Because he's more positive about it, and I'm a rabid pessimist. Right. Where do you think yeah. this is going to go? Well, I, I think, um, if I had to bet, I think the vapors of wokeism will magically dissipate. <laughs> that everyone will just uh, all of a sudden pretend that they were never woke. You know, like whether it's going to be the, just going to be a salient moment where you can, you can point to in your timeline. Or it's just going to be this magical dissipation of, uh, you know, where people start making much more sense on these topics. I, if I had to bet, I would think that's going to happen. And I don't think it's so. I, and I think it's going to happen in some short order. I don't think we're going to be having this conversation in five years. I would, I would, I would be very surprised if we're having this conversation in five years. Now that, that you know, count me, I guess, as an optimist on that front. Um, and I certainly could be wrong, but. I would be surprised. Um, I mean, the one caveat I would I would put there is, if we get four more years of Trump, then that goes completely out the window. I mean, I think, or if, or if we get four more years of Trump or a Trump-like phenomenon that's just as provocative to the left, mm -hmm. then uh, then that calculation changes. But is it possible? Just is it possible that people like us, who think in the way that we do? have forgotten that thing. I think it was a Chesterton who said this, that when you stop believing in God, you don't believe in nothing, you believe in anything. Right. Is it possible that this new religion, and I certainly see wokeness as a religion, is a product of a society that has let go of that religion that it used to follow? Well, I, th I think it's, I mean, the short answer is probably not, because I think many of the woke are, you know, religious by my lights. I mean, they would certainly claim to be religious. It's not like you have a, 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 a I don't know if polling research exists on this. It'd be interesting to run these polls, but a lot of millions and millions of people found it at, at specific moments in our, in our, you know, recent history. Like, and you know, the George Floyd killing was certainly one of those moments where it's like, okay, this is enough is enough. Like, this is my religion, right? Uh, and and that's um, it's understandable, and it is yes, it, it does have a religious dynamic, or you know, the far right being I, Trumpistan, right? Uh, so Sam, but you, it was a bond, it was a community. People could go, they could meet other people, they could feel connected, and so when people are disconnected, they're going to look for ways to connect with someone else and what better way to do that was then with you know I support this political movement BLM yeah. or you know you share the same immutable characteristics as me you know I'm gay or I'm black or etc etc and because we're so desperate because we're literally programmed to form communities that we're going to have this ideology which is going to enable us to create a community 
Yeah, and and on the and that's the first order of business business and the next one to figure out how we can have successful conversations on some level, right? Mm-hmm. Like, because again, all we have is is a capacity to persuade one another, so as to engineer, you know, forward looking cooperation, or we have violence, right? And like in the end, it's like we just have to force people to do stuff if we can't persuade them to do stuff or that they you know they they can't come to the the epiphanies on their own persuasion is the only good tool again i mean for i mean we're going to have to use force in certain circumstances and i you know and I, I think we should be very i don't think pacifism is 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 a is a plan there i mean i think we actually do need to have our force game together to, for for the situations where we need it you know and that's individually and collectively right at the level of nation states um talk about as well See, so, your problem is sam you meditate too much and you're too smart you th- and you think other people are like you but they're not sam harris thank you so much for coming on we really Pleasure. recommend you check out sam's podcast